There are more drivers on the road this afternoon. If you've been out and about, most of the snow is gone, but ice still remains as temperatures are still in the 30s. And tonight we could be bracing for another deep freeze. That could mean problems for your roads and pipes once again. Let's get an update right now on the forecast. Jeff standing by in the Storm Tracker Center with a look at the afternoon forecast. Hey, Jeff. Hey there. Yeah, we are looking at right now temperatures above the freezing mark here in the uh, triangle. Matter of fact, we're in the middle 30s heading towards around 40, 41, 37 in Beaumont, 37 in Orange, 35 in Port Arthur. Silsby's above freezing at 34. Jasper's above freezing at 33 and Kirby will right at freezing at 32. Woodville currently sitting at 30. As you look to our north and west, it looks like a large area of possibly some freezing precipitation, maybe some freezing rain and snow. Well, that's that actually hitting the ground. A lot of that is uh, on radar, but it's not making it all the way to the ground. So even though it looks like there might be some snow in northern Tyler County, you might see a, a random flake, but uh, uh, you're probably not going to deal with any precipitation for this afternoon, but it will keep your temperatures in the lower to middle 30s for later on today. Add to the, the cold temperatures, the wind, you're looking at wind chills right now in the 20s. So you need to bundle up if you're going to be out and about this afternoon, but the actual this is the wind chill, of course, for how it feels to the skin, but the actual temperatures I just showed you uh, back into the uh, 30s, middle 30s. So most of the ice is melted, maybe a couple places on bridges or underpasses that might be a little icy, but for the most part, roads are pretty good. Uh, looks like as we head towards tonight, we will see a hard freeze. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. All right, thanks so much, Jeff. Well, Veterans Memorial Bridge, the Rainbow Bridge now open to traffic. And of course, many of them closed down because of the ice and snow on the roadways. Our 12 News reporter Kara Willis standing by with an update. Kara. A welcome sight for drivers. The Rainbow Bridge is now reopened to traffic. It was one of the first major bridges in our area to close during the winter storms. But drivers need to be aware that other bridges still remain closed in our area. Earlier, many drivers were seen disappointed that the Veterans Memorial Bridge was still closed, but it just reopened. We were there as TxDOT crews were scooping snow off the icy roads to make travel safe for drivers. Even though this is good news for these bridges, the Maury Myers, Lindbergh Overpass and Dallin Road Overpass are still closed to traffic. There are many travelers on the road and they're driving full speed. To get the latest on road closures and reopenings, check drivetexas.org. In Port Arthur, Kara Willis, 12 News. And once again, just before we went on the air, Veterans Memorial Bridge has now reopened if you'd like to go between Bridge City and Port Arthur. Well, TxDOT does warn that tonight's low temperatures might be enough, though, to cause black ice on the roads again. So we'll continue to monitor those changing road conditions for you and keep you updated about any additional closures. Well, millions of Texans are now under orders to boil their water before they drink it. And that includes almost all of the homes and businesses in Jefferson and Orange counties. Here is the current list that we have. It's on your screen right now, a complete list on our 12newsnow.com website, as well as on the 12 News app. If you'd like to check it out, pretty much everybody. And we know that that is a lot of information for you. If you want to know if your town is under a boil water notice, you can simply text us the word water to 409-838-1212, and we will send the latest updated list to your cell phone. Well, the cleanup has barely begun for those of you with busted pipes from this week's wicked winter weather. Your first calls were probably to your plumber and your insurance company. So how will that claims process go? Many of you asking that question. What's your best bet if you're dealing with damage? Well, every policy, of course, is different. But a basic homeowner's insurance policy provides financial protection against loss due to disasters and as well as theft and accidents and most standard policies also include coverage for the structure of your home coverage for your personal belongings and liability protection as well as coverage for additional living expenses but allison wright with farmers insurance says you do have to read the fine print of your policy if an insured has questions about what is covered that they reach out to their agent directly and ask can you go over my policy with me and tell me what is covered and what is not covered. And you'll also need to ask which category those busted pipes will fall into. And even if your busted pipes are not included in your homeowner's package, there is an option that you may wanna add on, an endorsement, but an endorsement only covers 
future damage, unfortunately. As for the cleanup, Wright says, take your time. Take pictures. Documentation is key because the adjuster or the claims representative cannot be there with you as the damage is happening. Um, you want to be able to to provide documentation for them as if they were there and they can see that damage from your point of view. So photos, video showing the water running into your home will help with the claims process. And don't throw anything out, including sheetrock, before an adjuster sees or gives you further instruction. Many folks in Southeast Texas are cleaning up with the lights on. Entergy making great progress, saying all outages should be fixed by the end of today. And here is a look at the Entergy power outage map. All of that green, that's a good sign. Entergy has about 950 Southeast Texans still in the dark, most cases out of Liberty County. It does take us some additional time to move through those segments. We break them down smaller so that way as we bring people back on, we're not damaging any of their equipment and potentially causing longer outages for customers. And the rolling power outages that we saw have stopped. Crews, though, are still out, so they say be careful since temperatures are still very cold. And power crews in Jasper Newton County is also working to get the lights back on there. The Jasper Newton Electric Cooperative is now reporting 3,000 customers without power. Judge Allen taking action saying if the need arises, the Jasper Annex building will open as a shelter. Mother Nature is unpredictable, but they want to remind you, if you can, just stay home till it warms up. And the battle to get the lights turned back on in Texas has made significant progress. Nearly 2 million Texans have had their power restored, most of those on the statewide grid called ERCOT. At the rate they're going, the additional 200,000 homes will be restored every hour. To help speed up the process, Governor Abbott issued an order requiring natural gas producers to only sell to power generators in the state through February 21st. So the, the fact is, every source of power the state of Texas has access to uh, has been compromised because of the ultra cold temperature or uh, because of equipment failures. Well, a lot of the blowback that we've been hearing has been focused on the state's power grid. ERCOT took down the names and bios of their board members and executive team due to threats and despite failing to properly winterize their equipment. The CEO defended the decision to impose statewide outages. So what we are avoiding and the reason that we, we are in this situation is that we risk that uh, catastrophic blackout at one in the morning on uh, Monday and we had to reduce the demand to get the supply and demand back in balance. And we've been working to get that balance back so we can operate the system reliably and safely uh, going forward. A third of the board of directors we've learned that operate the state's electrical grid do not appear to live in Texas. The governor and House Speaker Dade Phelan are among those calling for an investigation. And Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz is also now facing some backlash. According to the Associated Press, Cruz traveled to Mexico for a family vacation as his Texas, uh, or the people here in Texas were grappling with the weather crisis. Photos on Twitter that we have not been able to independently verify appear to show Cruz and his family at a Houston airport waiting for a flight to Cancun. The Associated Press says that it spoke with anonymous sources with direct knowledge of the situation who confirmed the trip. Numerous media outlets have rep repeatedly attempted to contact Cruz and have so far not received an answer to their request.